الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم اما بعد If you are traveling whether you're traveling flying or driving or even going by boat for example uh, how should you spend your time what do you do you man having fun <laughs> having fun right but i mean you uh, on the ride itself you're, you're, you're going to have 10 hours flight for example or maybe 4 hours drive how would you spend your time in the in the car or even uh, uh, on the flight? Most people today, what do they do, Jima? They, they watch TV on the on on the uh, on the flight or even uh, the, they they play games with their iPads and, and computers and so on. And when they're driving, perhaps a lot of them are just focusing and thinking and concentrating. But there is one virtue and one thing that is very very important. It's one of the greatest opportunities that the traveler or the musafir has no one else really except for a few other scenarios yani, will have this opportunity and that opportunity is a dua making dua and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala in the Riyadh al-Salihin under the chapter or the book of the book for, uh, of etiquette uh, of traveling قال باب استحباب الدعاء في السفر chapter the desirability of supplications during the journey وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاث دعوات مستجابات أو مستجابات لا شك فيها ثلاث دعوات مستجابات لا شك فيها The Messenger of Allah said three supplications are answered without doubt and Allah سبحانه وتعالى would, would, would answer these calls قال دعوة المظلوم ودعوة المسافر ودعوة الوالد على ولده صلى الله عليه وسلم he says, the Prophet says, uh, the supplication of the oppressed, someone who has been wronged, and you be careful if you're wrong against anyone, whether this someone is close to you as a relative or even distant, Muslim or non-Muslim, it doesn't matter, because when it comes to justice, the issue of faith and, and deen over here becomes irrelevant. You have to be just and fair with everybody regardless. So if they make dua against you, even the dua of the non-Muslims, if this person was oppressed and you are the one who was the oppressor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer their call, bring justice. So be careful with that. And now we're talking about any type of, of oppression or injustice, whether it's $5 or $5,000, whether it's a matter of you know being offensive, using abusive power and authority over somebody else, or what, what, whatever whatever oppression or injustice that you bring against someone closer to you or even cl not closer to you. Sometimes even you and your children. I mean, these are your kids and you have the, you are the authority figure at home. Uh, you have the right to uh, set the rules and the laws you know, in the house. However, that does not warrant you uh, the, the, the liberty to be unfair and being in, un unjust to them or oppress them by any means. So therefore, you have to make sure that even with your children, even with your spouse, you're fair and you're just as well. And he said, قَالَ وَدَعْوَةُ الْمُسَافِرِ And the supplication of a traveler. The supplication of a traveler. Someone who's on the journey, on the road. Why is that? Because the, the, a traveler, specifically back in the days when they used to travel by camel and sometimes you know, on foot, the, the journey is so perilous and so dangerous. <coughs> and people sometimes they get stranded and literally they get stranded, will, they will have no assistance, no help but from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Chances that they fall uh, victim of robbery on highway people would be great. And therefore, if no one is there to help them and assist them, there is no police in that area, who's going to help them? The dua from Allah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the dua was granted and was accepted. And finally, the Prophet says, وَدَعْوَةُ الْوَالِدِ عَلَى وَلَدِهِ And the supplication of the parent عَلَى وَلَدِهِ says against his son although the translation says for his child but the dua ala waladi and the, the the word ala that's basically any against them if the father if the father or the mother let's say the child was misbehaving being disobedient and so on and they make dua against him it's very dangerous as your mom. so for the young ones you guys be careful that your mom says may you go and do so and so and happen to you that's dangerous or when she starts yelling and starts saying things you don't like to hear from her. That's this very, very dangerous. And that reminds us with the famous hadith, hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
when he mentioned uh, uh, the story of the three children <coughs> who spoke in cradle when they were still babies and infants, one of them, one of the child, who was related to a righteous man from Bani Israel. At least the story was related to this man. And this man, his name was, uh, he was actually like a, a monk. Um, uh, uh, what's his name, Jamal? Al-Rahib. No, no, no. This actually, um, what's his name? So basically, this man was was worshiping in the in, in his uh, whatever actually uh, yani, uh, temple or so on. His mom starts calling him. She starts calling him to uh, uh, for something. The man was in salah. He was making salah. So he said, "Ya Rab, ummi aw salati. Which one should I give first? My salah, my devotion to you, or should I obey my mom?" Then he continued with his salah. So eventually, the second time. His mom called, same thing. Should I continue my salah or I obey my mom, just listen to my mom, should I break my salah? So he preferred to continue his salah. By the way, salah was nafil, means it wasn't an obligatory salah, it was a nafil salah. The third time, his mom got very upset. When he didn't answer, we didn't come, she made dua against him. He says that, may Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, basically yani, keep you to live, to live enough so that you meet the faces of the mumisat, the mumisat, the prostitutes. Means may you be tried by these women. So because you you making yourself monk and most righteous, so and so, may you be tried by so and so of these women. It happened at one point, and one one time a lady she came by and eventually she tried to seduce him. The man says, "Allahu Billah, he didn't want to have anything to do with this." Then she went out and she eventually she had some some affairs with her. Uh, with one of these shepherds, she got pregnant when she was asked, who is this child for? Where did you get this from? She said, from, uh, from uh, this rai, from that monk. So they went to him. And of course, you know, they, they were very upset. People, they were very angry. How could, you know, you, you fake this, uh, this piety and righteousness all this time? So they destroyed his, uh, his place. And then uh, eventually they brought him down and, the, and he told him, he said, just where is that child? So they brought the child. And eventually he just, uh, he, he poked him. And he called, Ya Ghulam. He, of course, he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help him and assist him in this situation. He said, Ya Ghulam man abuk. Hey, you little boy, who's your father? The boy, the baby spoke. He says, my father is a shepherd, so and so. So when the people, they saw this miracle that was given to this man as a sign of his uh, innocence. They were shocked, of course. And they apologized for him. They said, we're going to build you this place made of gold. He goes, no, I want my shack to return back and just make it out of the same thing, straws and wood and so on. So they made it to him. So the point here is that the dua of the mother was dangerous. Very, very dangerous. And look at this. It was against a very righteous man. Now, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean parents abuse their authority as well. They keep threatening their children even if it was a matter of injustice against their children. Let's say you have to marry your cousin. I don't like my cousin. If you don't marry your cousin, I'm going to make dua that Allah Azza wa put you in this and then do so and so. <laughs> I don't want to marry her. I just don't want to marry her. Now if you don't, again, so these kind of duas, honestly, if they're made unjustly, and hopefully they will not have an effect. Some of the ulama, like Imam Ibn Miflah and also Sheikh Sabah ibn Taymiyyah, and he mentioned that the dua of the father, that when it's, when it's fair and just, that goes through. But if the father always abuses that authority and that privilege, and the mother as well, you know, against their child, every time, you know, they, they, they demand something that is unreasonable, they keep threatening them with that. That's, not, that's unusual. However, children, as much as possible, of course, even in these kind of, what they might consider unrealistic or unreasonable demands, still, if you can, you know, wish, you grant your, your parents' wishes, there's nothing, there is no doubt, this is a great virtue that you maintain that. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you from this da'awati. Oh, yes. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your du'a mustajab and acceptable. Yes. Wallahu ta'ala. Na. Any question? Yes. We have learned that there are rules or the rules of Islam being accepted. There are certain rules of the du'a, you know, sincerity, halal, risk. Na. Yes. Oh, you know, several points that are for du'a to be accepted. Na. So, 
three occasions, does that mean uh, these five or whatever penalty rules that there are, they just don't apply? No. We learned that for the, dua, the question, we learned that the dua uh, would be accepted if the person who's making the dua, um, let's say, uh, acquires specific qualities, such as a uh, halal provision and being a specific time and so on. Eventually, does that mean these duas are exceptional? Because what if this person, his, his provision was not halal? A father makes dua against his child, or a traveler is making dua against, you know, without, without having his provision halal. Well, dua and musafir in particular, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in another hadith, Rubba Ash'atha Alba, someone who's on the journey, being on a long, long journey, and then he raises his hands with, uh, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making dua. And then the Prophet, he said, this person, even in such circumstances, their food, their drink, their clothing, and their nutrition, they're all haram. How do you expect Allah to answer their call? So it does actually affect, it does affect based on this hadith. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a rahim. He's the most merciful. If he knows that this person, even if his provision is not haram, but he was wrong badly, and Allah Azza wa Jal wants to give this person a chance of revenge in that sense. It could happen. Allah Nah. Yes. Uh, Sheikh, uh, how, how effective is the dua uh, made by the sometimes, you know, the back of beggars, you know, they are you know, begging something and it is not here. They make dua so, against you? I'm not dua against you. <laughs> the question is what if, if, let's say, in some Muslim countries you meet some of these beggars? And they're asking you for money. You're not in the mood, you don't have the money, or for whatever reason, you say, I don't have anything. Then they start making, they start cursing and making dua against you. Would their dua be accepted? I mean, if you wrong them, that's dangerous as well. Uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah uh, it says in Surah uh, Al Baqarah, Qawlum ma'rufu ma'faratun khayru ma sadaqati yatba'uha adam. Means you give them a good word. And be nice and kind to them, better than giving charity, and keep taunting them with that. Like saying, here you go, never show me your face again. You don't say that. But instead it says, here you go, now let me make it easy for you. That's the best way of doing it. You don't have anything, tell them honestly, I wish I can give you, but I really don't have anything. No, you know, I know that you have it, you're just hiding it from me. On, I told you, I don't have right now. I wish I can give it right now. Just keep your mouth, keep controlling you know, your words so that you don't invoke, you know, the dua of this person. But if you did wrong to this person, that's a different story. If you if you hurt the person, if you just kind of mocking him and so on, and then they made dua against you because they feel they feel hurt by that. You know, because it's, my circumstances are different. So if you hurt them and they make dua, Allah it could be acceptable. Yeah. So be careful with that. Yes. Two questions. Um, one is around the, the other thing that you were mentioning. So if you're in one room and say your kids are in the other room and you don't know them, say they're praying, mm -hmm. if we call them, is it obligatory for them to answer your call, breaking the salah, or do they continue? The if, you be, if they were praying nafil and then uh, uh, your parents call, for example, if you're praying nafil and your parents call, and you know that they need you immediately, for instance, then in this case you need to answer the call. Answer the call. If it was fard, you could say subhanallah, so they realize that you're making salah. But if it was an emergency or something urgent that they cannot wait, in this case you should answer them. Wallah. Sheikh, no. uh, who's the third uh, child that spoke? And then, from Isa alayhi uh, salam. Isa alayhi this, ch this child, the child of the Ashab al Uhdud, uh, and also uh, the story of. Uh, um, Yeah, that's the one, which is Ashab al-Khdud, it's not the Fir'aun actually. So you have uh, Ashab al-Khdud, the child of Israel, and uh, a story from Bani Israel, no, a story from Bani Israel, when a woman, she was holding a baby, and uh, she, she saw, she saw a, a knight, who was an arrogant knight, and surrounded by his entourage and so forth. So she said, Allahumma ja'awal waladi mithlaha. Ya Allah, make my child, my child grow up to become like this man. The child and the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, and he was describing, even illustrating. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that the child was sucking, you know, basically, the milk. He was eventually nursing from his mom. The child stopped nursing, and the Prophet, he illustrated that with his finger. He, was, he put his finger in his mouth, ﷺ, and he took his, his finger out, 
Because the child then said, Qala Allahumma la taj'alni mithla hadha. Oh Allah, don't make me like this one. <laughs> and then, after some time, a woman was being basically dragged into the streets and she was beaten and humiliated. You did so and so, you, st you stole this, you, you did this and that. So basically people unfortunately they're humiliating that lady. And she was saying, Wallahi, I didn't. Ya Allah, help me. She was just basically asking Allah for assistance and help and denying what they're claiming that she did. Then the woman, she said, Ya Allah, don't make my child this, like this, this lady. The child was, was also a nursing, so the Prophet illustrating, he said, he took basically his, his, his finger off, and he goes, the child said, Ya Allah, la Allahumma ja'alni mithla hadi. Oh Allah, make me like this woman. So the mother in this case, the first time she thought she was dreaming, perhaps hallucinating. And now, what is this? I mean, I'm telling you to be like that, that first man, and now you're asking yourself to be like this one. He told her, Amma al-awwal fa jabba. The first one was a tyrant. And I don't want to have this arrogance. Yani, uh, I don't want to be like this person. Wahadi al as for this lady, they say, Fa'alat kada wa fa'alat kada. She did all these horrible things and she didn't do. She's such a noble, yani, righteous woman and she didn't know what they claim that she did. But those are the three that were mentioned in this hadith. Allah. I'm still trying to remember the, the name of the, of the Rahab al Jama'ah. It's very famous. Um, a story about uh, the parent you know, uh, supplicating on their child that's nah. before them. Mm -hmm. I heard, I know of a lady that uh, was cleaning her house and the child came in walking after she mopped and cleaned and everything and he had mud on his feet and she was so mad, she said, what are you doing? Go, may Allah break your feet, may uh -huh. break, break your legs. An hour later he had an accident and yeah. his legs were broken actually. He had a, a bad accident, he still, you know, suffers from it. So and she had to live with it for the rest of her life, unfortunately. How, how, how guilty she would feel, so oh, yeah. make a die against her child this happened. Right. You see, the Prophet ﷺ, he warned parents. He says, لا تدعو على أنفسكم. Don't make dua against yourselves. He means by that also your children. Allah, so that, so that your dua might, might, يعني, uh, might arrive or might catch an opportunity when the gates of heaven are open. Yeah. So you make a dua against your child, and then subhanAllah will be accepted. Be careful. So if you're going to ever make dua against your child, make it good. Just like you mentioned in one of these previous sessions. If you're going to have to make dua against your child, just say, Allah yahdik. May Allah guide you. May Allah forgive you. Allah yaslihak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist you. Whatever, any, any word that is good. It makes you feel good that you said something. Still the word is good and it's dua for your children. Allah. Is there any uh, specification on what's called or what's traveling? Walking a certain distance, mm -hmm. if you're driving or... Okay, the question is what do we consider a, a, a suffer in order to qualify the dua to be accepted? What is considered a journey or travel? Uh, travel is identified by the culture, by the culture of the local area. So, what is considered suffer? For us here, let's say in Dallas area, for example, uh, traveling from, from here, from Irving, for example, going all the way up to McCain, is that considered travel? Let's see, how many of you would say it's traveling, man? To McKinney. Going to McKinney. No, no, we're not talking about walking. We're talking about driving, because that's the, that's the norm right now. The norm right now is driving. No one is going to be walking to McKinney. <laughs> but if you drive to McKinney, is that considered travel? Most likely, the vast majority of the population in the area, they won't consider that travel. But if you tell them going to Tyler, for example, about two hours away, or going across the, the, the Oklahoma, for example, borders, that is considered travel by almost unanimous agreement for the people who live over here. So it's by the cultural norm. What people consider travel would be considered travel. And doesn't have to be identified by Muslim vote. We're talking about general culture over here. That people they consider travel, it becomes travel. Wallah. Now. I read about Sheikh Shuraim's mom. Once she was cooking food for guests, and he was a little boy, and he was playing with dust and everything, and he threw all over the food. And mm -hmm. his mom came, and she was mad, but she made dua for him. She said, may Allah make you the Imam of Haram. And he became Imam of Haram. Allahu Akbar, I don't know about that one. I have to ask him. <laughs> this is a story about Imam of Haram, but Allahu Akbar. We have to uh, verify the story from him. Yeah. Fair inshallah. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashara ala ala, astaghfirullah.